morning, this is Monty. Back at it again. Good morning, you guys. How are you doing? Nice, beautiful morning out here in um, Camarillo, California. It's not as sunny right now, uh, but it's cool. It's a little bit overcast. Overcast. Uh, not overcast, overcast, which is fine. It'll probably warm up a little bit later on, but nonetheless, still a lovely weather. We need to get more seasons, probably. Uh, some real winters, some real summers, and uh, fall wouldn't hurt either. So, anyway, when you have mild weather as consistently as this, it gets a little bit bo- a little bit boring. So, you do want some change, uh, some seasonal change and variety. That's for sure. What's going on the, on the big picture, you guys? Let's see. Look like Kavanaugh is going to probably be uh, confirmed today, I think. Uh, the politicians absolutely refuse to stand up for what's right and to do the right thing. Everybody's caving in and giving in and and uh, not even acknowledging uh, their inherent the, the inherent problems that we're having with women being taken advantage of and everyone looking the other way and the power of special interests and money influencing politics and everything is just insane. Anyway, it's going to be another major disappointment coming out of Washington, D.C. What else is new, right? So, anyway, that's what's happening there. Um, Unfortunately, I'm reading a lot of bad news or negative news about um, layoffs and and, uh, store closings. Look like there's a major man, one of the major manu- mattress manufacturers of all businesses, is going to be going to filing bankruptcy. Um, some mattress company, the the, the a major one. Uh, in, in addition to what I'm hearing about uh, Ford and GM and Hyundai and who is it Peugeot and Volkswagen, BMW, <laughs> everybody moving a lot of operations to. Uh, Morocco, <laughs> I think that's, they're going to lower their cost of production, I think, by moving to Morocco. A lot of those operations, rather, are going to be in Morocco. So that's kind of interesting. That's kind of revealing. And, and believe it or not, food banks, a lot of food banks are going to be having their coffers filled up uh, due to the federal government purchasing $1.2 billion dollars worth of agricultural food and food products from um, from farmers. So a lot of that a lot of that food is going to go into um, the food banks. So uh, for those people who are t- who you know who, who need to take advantage of those types of programs, definitely you want to start keeping tabs on your nearest food bank in your respective state. A 1.2 billion dollars worth of food products is definitely it's going to help out some people, but I think logistically it's going to be an issue in terms of distributing the food. So all you people who, who, who have the financial means, you may want to donate money to your local food bank to help out with distribution of the food to the needy people. Um, I think this company, country may be going into a recession, so there's probably going to be a lot of people taking advantage of their local food banks, so you may want to keep it an eye out and an ear out for that. Uh, By the way, my name is Monty Henry. I'm owner of DPO Surveillance Equipment. I run a full service surveillance and security equipment company. And we have lifetime guarantees and warranties on all the products. We have um, the largest uh, inventory of items that not only can you buy, but you can rent and lay away as well. And we have a full on media center. The media center consists of articles, podcasts, blogs, demonstration videos, uh, you name it. These articles cover every conceivable topic, probably. Uh, Cybersecurity, uh, cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, um, health and fitness, uh, surveillance and counter-surveillance, all sorts of topics. Go there. Uh, Economics and finance, go there and take a look around and let me know what you think. That information is free. You can download it, share it with other people. It's up to you. We're also um, big fans of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, 
in terms of promoting it and, and hoping that everybody uses it, uses it and adopts it. We do want mass adoption of Bitcoin and uh, massive deployment of blockchain. We accept Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bcash on our website. So you may want to take advantage of that. Uh, buy your favorite state-of-the-art law enforcement grade, lifetime guaranteed and warranted spy gadgets using your favorite cryptocurrencies. Uh, and our shopping cart on the website, which, which has been redesigned completely. The entire website is completely redesigned. Has a ton of new products, has a, has a ton of uh, used products. The used products are the formerly rented products. They can't be sold as new, so we discount them heavily, and you can uh, get discounts on the used products. And then finally, we want to poke, in the, uh, poke, uh, poke a stick in the eye or finger in the eye of the, of the traditional finance industry. That includes MasterCard and Visa, the American Express, Western Union, MoneyGram, Wells Fargo, HSBC, UBS. All of them have been ripping off people, have been committing every sort of crime imaginable. That includes money laundering. That includes uh, human trafficking, assisting in human trafficking when you launder money. Uh, for instance, you help people who are trying to um, who send illicit gains from one point to the other. That's what you do if you're a bank. You assist in those trades. When you, you assist in that business, those illicit businesses, when, when, you, when, you, when you don't monitor your transactions going in and out of your, your banks and such. And then also um, the credit card industry has been ripping off people. Uh, promoting credit card abuse, um, gouging people, gouging merchants. $70 billion a year goes from the pockets of companies like mine over to the pockets of the, the MasterCards and the Visas and American Expresses of the world. So that whole industry is corrupt and we want to expedite its early demise by shifting over to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Um, what else? Let's see. Let's take a look at the article, because I think this article actually exemplifies exactly what we're up against in, in terms of why this problem with the traditional finance industry is so widespread. Excuse me, the name of the article, Western Union makes digital push amid fierce competition for money transfers. Again, Western Union makes digital push amid fierce competition for money transfers. The company is looking to expand digital services to 200 countries. Western Union Company is aggressively expanding its digital services as the money transfer agent, uh, m money transfer giant, tries to keep pace with competitors vying for international transfers. At stake in this digital race is a growing share of an industry that each year handles more than half a trillion dollars in remittances, and which money f mostly flows from migrant workers to their home countries. Of the $81.8 billion Western Union consumers transferred in 2017, 91% was sent across international borders. Raj Agrawal, finance chief of the company, estimated that WesternUnion.com money transfer revenue, which includes use of the mobile app last year, topped $400 million, or about 11% of consumer revenue. The digital business has been growing at a roughly 20% annual rate, and this year, company executive, executives expect a half a billion dollars in digital revenue, he added. It's, it's becoming more, meaningful, more of a meaningful part of our revenue. Although the digital business currently makes up only a relatively small portion of Western Union's top line, it represents the company's strongest growth prospect, prospects, an analysts said. There's no denying that there's a transition from a world of cash-centric transfers to one in which digital wallets are becoming much more commonly used. Excuse me, said Darren Peller, an analyst for Wolf Research. The bottom line is that they have no choice. They must invest in e-commerce. Some analysts wonder if Western Union has been slow in making digital a priority and whether it has ceded meaningful ground to aspiring fintech rivals in the race to become the international equivalent of Venmo, the popular mobile money transfer service owned by PayPal Holdings, competitors such as PayPal's Zoom Corporation, World Remit Limited, TransferWise Limited, 
and remittly incorporated are leveraging smartphones and other technologies to drive down the cost of sending money across borders. It would have been nice to have seen money. Uh, well, it would have been nice to have seen Western Union do more do do more acquisitions in this space. Mr. Peller said that would have helped to accelerate the process earlier. They are not too late, but they could have done more earlier. Western Union's digital expansion is aimed at grabbing more of the remittance market, which accounted for about 485 billion in international transfers to developing countries, according to the World Bank. We're going to be able to address a larger portion of the market, Mr. Agrawal said. In the coming weeks, the company plans to launch digital operations in crucial hubs such as Malaysia, Singapore, Mexico, and the United Arab Emirates. Last month, the company introduced its mobile app in Mexico, where remittance inflows last year totaled $31 billion. Western Union's ultimate goal is to allow customers in 200 countries to be able to send and receive money using whatever methods they choose, whether that means digital services or a walk-up window at a retail location. That would be up from 45 countries where it currently offers that level of service, uh, service variety. The company has some advantages that provide a buffer against fintech competition, muscular compliance, regulatory capabilities, and a far-reaching physical retail presence that spans countries where cash is still king, analysts said. Sending a money transfer digitally, digitally from one mobile user to another requires that both parties are linked to bank accounts, which is still a barrier for some users. Oh, that's not a true statement. Um, because even in the Bitcoin space, um, you can download numerous wallets to your, your phone and anyone can send you money, uh, and, and you can, and so you can, you can send and receive money from anyone as long as they have Bitcoin in their wallet and you, and you have a Bitcoin wallet set up on your phone. Uh, we, we can do peer to peer and we have been doing peer to peer for four or five years or something. Um, so that's not a true statement. This, these supposed, supposed experts uh, from Western Union, they, they're, they're either incompetent or they're just flat out lying. So remember, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you can transfer money back and forth between two people or more all day long. Millions of dollars, not just under 10000 or something, but millions or billions of dollars. It doesn't matter where you are, how much, how how. how it doesn't matter the amount. It can be extremely small or extremely large. It really doesn't matter. No minimums, no maximums. Few companies outside of bricks and mortar money transfer firms, MoneyGram International and Euronet Incorporated Real Money Transfer subsidiary can match Western Union's comprehensive reach. Working only in digital, you can only serve those who have a bank account. Again, that's not true. That's a lie. Incompetent or retarded or something but definitely not true, you guys. Said Bob Napoli, an analyst for William Blair, everyone is saying cash is going away, but I don't think that, I, that, that it will happen in my lifetime. You, st you still need those payout locations. Again, download, <laughs> download a Bitcoin wallet, um, blockchain.info, Samurai wallet, whatever wallet you want to use, um, and... Find out for yourself. See for yourself. You, you know, you can transfer fractions of a penny. You can transfer billions of dollars. It doesn't matter with, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So these guys are way behind the times. Moving right along. Oh, yeah, I just want to make a point here. They're, Western Union talk about uh, muscular compliance, regulatory capabilities, etc., let me give you an idea about their compliance and, and regulatory capabilities. Meanwhile, <laughs> January 4th, 2018, Western Union settles New York money laundering probe for $60 million. Western Union Company will pay $60 million to resolve allegations that it failed for more than a decade to maintain a program to deter and report transactions involving suspected criminal fraud and money laundering. New York's fin financial regulator said on Thursday, the settlement with the New York Department of Financial Services, otherwise known as DFS, follows the money transfer company's agreement in January 2017 to pay $586 million, or over half a billion dollars, you guys, 
uh, to resolve similar claims by the U.S. Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission, DFS, or Department of Financial Services, alleged that from 2004 to 2012, Western Union failed to implement and maintain an effective anti-money laundering program aimed to deter criminals' use of, electron of, of its electronic network to facilitate fraud and money laundering. The regulator said Western Union executives and managers also ignored suspicious transactions to Chinese Western Union locations by several high-volume agents, including money transfers linked to human trafficking. DFS Superintendent Maria Vulo said in a statement, Western Union's executive put profits ahead of the company's responsibilities to detect and prevent money laundering and fraud. As part of the settlement, Western Union must submit a written plan to DFS aimed at ensuring the adequacy of its anti-money laundering and anti-fraud programs. It must also submit progress reports to DFS. Western Union said in a statement it had previously set aside $49 million to resolve the investigation. It also said that it had made substantial improvements aimed at enhancing compliance programs as part of a, of a deferred prosecution agreement with the Justice Department announced in January 2017 Western Union admitted it violated U.S. laws. The company also agreed in January 2017 to pay $5 million to various state attorneys general to reimburse investigative, enforcement, and other costs in connection with related investigations. So again, you guys, you know, you, you, you got to make sure you understand these people are some of the worst liars uh, in the financial industry that you can find. Um, because when you dig into what they're saying, you find out that they're, um, it, it doesn't matter what they say, what, they, what matters is what, what they're doing. And when you have agents who are um, laundering money through the Western Union branches, then that doesn't convince me that they're um, competent that they understand that this is a responsible function, you know, as far as financial services are concerned. I don't want to be involved, have anything to do with anyone who's, who's involved with human trafficking, money laundering, and, and the transfer and illicit gains from one place to the other. Okay, that's the last thing we want to do. So remember, um, Half a billion dollars, or, or, you know, in one instance, forty-nine million in another, five million in another. Um, you know, th th that's a problem. So, don't let these people deceive you into thinking Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies uh, has issues. This is a burgeoning industry that we're in with the cryptocurrency space, and because we have the blockchain, a lot of this information is transparent. But when you see, when you have a central point of attack or something like. You know, Western Union, Venmo, PayPal, Citibank, UBS, HSBC, uh, Wells Fargo, all of these institutions. What happens is the government, and in addition to crooks and criminals, they have a central place where they can attack or influence or, or some, some, you know, just, just basically take advantage of, okay? Central points. Remember, centralization is, an, is the issue. Decentralization is the solution, is the solution. And Bitcoin has decentralization. The FBI, the NSA, or the CIA, no one can go to the head of Bitcoin because no one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is and compel him to um, turn over records or compromise the security of the system or the network, um, steal all of the data and the data records and such from a central location. That doesn't happen in Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency space because with Bitcoin, there is no central place where all the data records are. There is no certain person to compel. Okay, so remember there are some major differences. Anyway, I just want to highlight uh, the lies and the, and the deceit going on, with, particularly with, with, with Western Union, and, and uh, to let you guys have a heads up, give you, give you, give you guys a heads up so you can avoid uh, the chaos and confusion associated with these executives who constantly lie to you. Anyway, we're going to wrap up this session. As I like to say, um, at the conclusion of every session, you guys keep your eyes and ears open, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.